What's going on everyone? I'm the OP Jealous and today I'm going to be team building around Choice Specs Cursola and it's actually not going to be a trick room team, which is generally the only reason you would see this mana no you. It's just going to be Choice Specs with enough speed for Toxapex. Toxapex hits 106 so we can go ahead and outspeed that and hit the 107. Earth Power is able to 2 it KO it. The one Pokemon that you can really take advantage of is Hatterene. Like you can U-turn out with a Dragon type and then bring this in. You can outspeed it and Shadow Ball. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and run Choice Scarf U-turn Hydreigon to be able to catch the Hatterene on the switch. And then we can go ahead and run Draco Meteor, Dark Pulse, and Flamethrower. I guess you can also kind of come in on Ferrothorn too, but Knockoff is very scary, so you definitely want the momentum against that as well. The problem is, most people won't pivot Ferrothorn initially on a Dragon because a lot of them run fire moves. Let's go Choice Scarf, and then I'll run just the max special attack, max speed spread. So, two special attackers, not really what I like to start off my cores with, but I definitely think... This is the one Pokemon that can get momentum into Cursola on Hatterene, so I definitely wanted to have it on the team. So from here, I don't want to be negative, but if Cursola doesn't actually do anything, like if their entire team is able to outspeed Cursola or Wallet, but they're still weak to Ghost, I would want to have another backup Ghost type to actually take advantage of that weakness. Obviously, I'll try to go for Cursola first, but on the off chance I'm not able to, let's figure something else out, so... Other good ghost types in, like are Gengar, which the thing with Gengar is I like to run choice sets like Choice Specs, Choice Scarf, but we already have two choice Pokemon and I don't like to run more than that, so let's think of a ghost type that doesn't revolve around choice items. The Dragapult sets that I like to run also revolve around choice items, same with Aegislash, I really only run specs. The only one that I can't really think of that that I can really think of that doesn't really use choice items is Mimic Use, so Let's go ahead and add that to this team with Adam into Life Orb. And actually, Cursola being able to wear down Ferrothorn with Spec Shadow Ball and having the speed tier over it is actually really good for Mimic Use, so maybe we can actually utilize that to our advantage. Don't know why I'm putting Special Attack Investment into my Mimic Use, but I'll run Adam and Nature right here with Sword Dance, Shadow Claw, Play Rough, Shadow Sneak. I don't think I need Drain Punch for Ferrothorn, although. I might add another Pokemon that's able to threaten Pharaoh because Cursola, you could put it low, it's probably not even going to put it low enough for Mimikyu. And then Hydreigon can wear it down, I guess, but let's actually do that right now. What else can beat down a Ferrothorn? Other Pokemon that evolve this are like Toxapex and Hippowdon, so ideally Pokemon, a Pokemon that could deal with those as well. You know what actually comes to mind? SD Turak comes to mind because plus two Earthquake like heavily dense packs, if not just outright KOs it. And then, like, close combat can kill Hippowdon, I think, with the roll, with Life Orb. And then, obviously, we, we destroy Ferrothorn, so we're gonna go Terrak. I haven't ran Terrak in a long time. That's the second time I've accidentally put a Guav Berry on my Pokemon, because I'm clicking way too fast. But, let's go Life Orb, and then I'll go Swords Dance, Play Rough. Play Rough, yeah, that's the correct move. Close combat, I'm still in the Mimikyu mindset. Uh, close combat, Stone Edge, and Earthquake. With Max Attack here. Max speed. And uh, Jolly Nature. Really skill-based Pokemon. Really takes a lot of skill to click close combat and Stone Edge and watch everything drop in one hit. I mean, Terrakion does take skill because sometimes you have to predict the offensive pivot coming in because it's a really good wall breaker, but if the opponent pivots in something that has the speed tier over it really aggressively, like Dragapult or Zera, for example, that could sit you really far in the back. So I just have to keep that in mind when playing with Terrak. Anyway, from here, I definitely need hazards. I don't have any hazard or hazard control on the team yet. And Swiss Scarf, Hydreigon, and Mimikyu, which are my two best endgames right now for this team, are definitely going to need that. So, I like Toad. Toad is definitely good because I don't really have... Well, I have Drake of his checks. I don't really have Drake of his switchings, especially if it's Scarf. So, Toad would be good in that regard. I'm just trying to debate whether I'm a bit more scared of Conkeldur because double knock punch weakness and then... Obviously, Cursola doesn't like knockoff. But if Mimikyu is going to be my win con, which it likely would in Conkeldur matchups, I think that I would just want to run Toad here to patch up the Dracovish weakness. So let's go ahead and stick with that. 
And I'm actually going to run knockoff over toxic. I think knocking off Clef is definitely a, not, a lot more valuable than toxic in this metagame because it's able to just get rid of the leftovers and make it a lot easier to wear down, especially considering I needed in range of Terrakion Stone Edge as much as possible. And I've even seen a few Fizz Def variants that are able to take on like Mimikyu's plus two hit for no reason at all. So I think knockoff is going to really help out over toxic. I talked a lot about that decision. Let's go Scald, Earth Power. Earth Power just for Cloyster because I do get 6 would by that right now. Because my Mimikyu is going to get Disguise broken by the first hit and then Icicle Spear just knocks me out after. So let's go ahead and run Leftovers, Water Absorb, and make it Max Fizz Duff. And then whatever this um, ground immunity is, it's going to have to take on Drill because Sandra has to Drill 6 O's me right now. I mean, technically Toad can take it on, but... Somebody made a really good comment yesterday where, like, you really don't want to use drill checks that are just going to get Iron Head full into range of plus two Earthquake. That's really not reliable, and Toad is one of those. Komo'o is another one, for sure. So I definitely don't want to do that. I'm going minus attack, despite the fact that I have knockoff, by the way. I don't think the power is going to make a difference, so... Instead of doing that, we're going to run Body Press Corviknight as a ground immunity defogger, which is able to take on the drill... Even if the Iron Head flinches me multiple times, I can still beat that thing 1v1 ideally. So, Body Press, U Turn. Honestly, in this metagame, you should always run moves that have secondary effects, from what I've noticed, because when you're facing like teams with a Wish Clef that are just going to pivot around and heal up their entire team, you want to have a chance to hacks them every single turn. So, secondary effects just make that so much easier. We'll go Roost and Defog with Leftovers. And then because I'm using this for drill, I want 48 defense to be able to 2 it KO it with body press if I can get rocks up. So let's go ahead and make sure I have that. And 208 spit F is still plenty for stuff like Dragapult, so I don't think we'll be too weak to that. The one thing that I'm noticing right here is I'm kind of weak to Zara and Kiram could be an issue, but I have really good offensive checks to Kiram. It's just Zara that I'm a bit worried about, but I think we can beat it. Like, I'll play offensively against it with Toad and Mimikyu and Scarf Hydreigon, and I should be able to win this scenario. Let's finish up this Corviknight and make sure I actually correct the IVs, which I always forget to do, so... Yeah, the 169, I did get a question about this the other day. I'm pretty sure somebody responded to it, but in case you don't know, the 30 IVs are to get a slower U-turn on opposing Corviknight, which can give you the offensive momentum, whereas if they get the offensive momentum, you get the bad positioning, right? So that's the mindset there, and yeah, that will be the team. Let's go ahead and get a game. So we have a game right now. Their Scarfer is probably the Jirachi, and they do have a Mandibuzz, which is never a good time for Curse Sola. The biggest threat to my team is easily the Zero, or I need to really watch out for that mon, but I think Mimikyu and Terrakion are definitely really good right here. I'm going to go for the end game with Mimikyu and probably try to break with Terrak. If I were them, I would just lead off with the Scarferachi, if I'm being honest. So let's go Toad. As they lead Toad. So let's think, would a knockoff on this help out anything? Or if I don't want to go for the knockoff, what's the alternative? I could make the Corviknight play right here. The thing that annoys me about that is they get up rocks, I'm forced to defog and they get the free Zara switch, so... I think we will just take the knockoff as they opt to Toxic. So, pretty okay exchange I would say. I could have gone Corviknight though because they clicked Toxic rather than rocks, but... I guess it is what it is. I'm actually gonna get in Cursola here. And uh, now we're in a situation where <laughs> they should pivot Clef initially, but I'm still going to Ice Beam hoping they go Mandibuzz. There we go. Okay, let's see how much this can do. Okay, 100 because it crit. That's how you break with Cursola, guys. Yeah, so that would have done, what, like 67 at least without the crit? That's kind of cool. Now, uh, here's the mod that 6 owes me. That's the problem. <laughs> I think uh, Toad is actually really bad. I'll just throw that out. They're definitely a Grass Nodder. I would definitely think so considering they have Jirachi on their team yeah but like I'm not gonna call it <laughs> that was actually really funny I'm glad that happened uh what play do I want to make here they showed knock right yeah they did okay we'll go to this guy and I want to say let's go right for the u-turn on the clef perfect this is what I was hoping to see Unfortunately, I need Zara a bit lower for Shadow Sneak to be able to do this, but right here I think that Terrakion can easily come in. And we're just going to SD. I don't think they would go hard to Zara. Yeah, they go for the Moonblast, and now I can try to break them their team with this. Let's go right for CC. I don't think they're risking the Clef. They could lose to Hydreigon if they do. 
Yep, they go ahead and suck off the toad. I knew they wouldn't just clap right there. Now here's the problem again. <laughs> uh, this thing as a whole, but it's gonna take more life orb ship here, which I really like. I'll obviously sack as they go for the knockoff. I'll make the Hydreigon play. Go right for a U-turn on the Clef. So now I have to debate, do I go for it here or do I go for... I actually think defogging might be worth it to help out Mimikyu later. They go hard Pharaoh. I mean, I can body press this for Mimikyu, so I'm not really concerned. If they're lead sheet, that's a bit more annoying. Unless they miss it, that's always fun. <laughs> Let's actually get out of here and go to this. As they miss again, <laughs> Cursola is just hexing everything here. And uh, we can throw off a spec shadow ball, and I don't even think Clef... Like, it'll take it, but if they get dropped, they're in a really tricky position. So they let the Pharaoh take it, and they missed a third elite sheet. Now I just feel bad for him. But I think Mimikyu wins now. <laughs> yeah, this... I don't want to say it was undeserved, because I think I had a chance to win this without the hacks, but... Like, now I basically guaranteed win with Mimikyu as long as I hit one player off into the Clefable. Which, I, I do feel bad about that. But what's the point? Like, look at how much I'm doing. It's really not that horrible. Like, we even got a roll right there where I just killed it. <laughs> so, like, now they have to go Zara, right? Oh, that's actually annoying. Do I die to knock off in one? Well, they ran. I'll be right back. So this right here is actually a game where I get 6 would by Weavile, and they have four Mimikyu counters on their team, so... Yeah, let's try to win. I'm gonna go ahead and lead off with Hydreigon. As they go with Pex, I think this could be... Baneful Bunker? Because I feel like... What would it be? Baneful Bunker or T-Specs on this team? T-Specs could be good with the Fat Core and Corviknight. I'll make the Corviknight play here as they go ahead and get up a T-Spec. Okay. Like, at least I have pressure here, so I'm able to beat those down. Like, they can't spam T-Specs and successfully keep them up. And I think right here, I will go for the U-turn and just try to pressure with Cursola early, I think. Like, if they to if they have Toxic as well or they Scald Burn me, that's going to be really annoying. They go for another T-Spike. Where is it on the ground? Is Cursola, like, above it? Anyway, I'm just going to Shadow Ball. Catches Corviknight for a bit. Like, it'll force it to Roost. Dude, that's a crazy play. This is a win condition. It actually took over half, too. So... Now I have to debate what I want to do, because if I go Corviknight and they actually get the 2 at KO, I don't get the defog and it's probably just a losing situation. Which I really have to be mindful of here. Like, I don't think this is a play. I think the better play is going Toad, despite the fact that they have a Dracovish. It's either that or I just sack off like Turak, but I think Turak does have viability. Okay, I should be able to live this. To a max defense. If I don't live this, I'm going to be very disappointed in my Pokemon. Maybe I'm being disappointed for no reason. Okay, yeah, I'll live. Because, like, even if they're adamant, let's get rid of that choice band. Yeah, look at that. They do no damage to me, and I will kill them. Knockoff does 81 max, but if the Icicle Crash flinch me and I'm not able to beat this, I will lose. Earth Power does 46. Oh, it doesn't. Um, well, that's a thing. I guess I might as well get a Brox then if I'm not winning this 1v1, right? I got a Brox, then go Mimikyu? Like, is that what I have to do here? Because if Earth Power is not doing any damage, and they're in range of Mimikyu anyway, what's the point of clicking Earth Power, right? Yeah, like, I, I don't think it's worth it to click Earth Power there. And then they're obviously gonna kill me. I have to go Mimikyu after and get a player off. Alright, there's no other play here. This probably... I want to say this dies to Ice Shard, and honestly, if I want to... If I have to flinch down their team, I would rather just do that. I mean, I could have Earth Powered and tried to go for the crit or even the Scald Burn, but I figured it wasn't worth it. I miss into Hippo, which it's annoying, but I don't think it'll matter in the long run. Like, I, I should lose this game. We'll make the Cursola play here. Really hoping they set up rocks. There we go. And uh, now we're going to crit a Shadow Ball. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I just straight up died to Earthquake. Maybe I should have thought about this a bit more. I forgot that I have base 50 defense. Does Powdown just straight up kill me? Okay, I do live here, which is good. Uh, Shadow Ball would do that much. I see much straight up KO. Now we're going to Shadow Ball. As they go Corviknight and I get the spit after drop. That's like best case scenario. 
because now they can roost, but they'll end up like really low. And like this thing being so low is really good for high dragon. I got another spit after off. Do they have an attack to hit me? Because if they do, I should die. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was a really lucky sequence, obviously. So SD Weaval, yeah, that's the threat here. I'm basically playing for hacks with Hydreigon right now. Like, I don't have another win condition the way I see it. Mimikyu could never win this, and I think... Like, I could defog, but then I'm getting rid of my own hazard chip on them. They tried to roost again. I don't really get it. They're, they're gonna go to Draco this year. Like, that's the best play. And then, yeah, I gotta, I gotta flinch stuff with Hydreigon. That's really all I can try to do. I guess Boots Weaval is also a good click. They're obviously going to attack. We got the Parish on them, which is kind of funny. I think... Weaval U-turn. I mean, Corbinite U-turn is not a bad idea. Do I try to defog or do I keep rocks up and commit to Hydreigon? I guess the question is, do I see Terrakion winning this? I think Dracovich is definitely Scarf, and because of that, Terrakion can't do it. I'm just going to U-turn. Wait, they gave it to me. They're kind of throwing now, because that was like one of their better ways to revenge Hydreigon. I'll obviously go to it here. Yeah, they're, they're hard to throwing by sacking the Weavile right there. I don't know why they would do such a thing. Now, I c now it might actually be worth it to get the defog. I think f here I definitely... I could roost, but then they go hard Dracovish. I think it's just defog now. Like, if they scald, it is what it is. I would rather just defog and guarantee this T-spec out of the way. Yeah, like, I didn't want to roost on this thing coming in. So right here, we'll sack. This thing is- this thing has to be Scarf. Like, there's no way you're another set on this team. And, uh, we'll make the Hydreigon play and spam Dark Pulse, I guess. That's- that was the whole plan from the beginning. They go to Pex. I have acknowledged I need to hacks the Pex. So let's go ahead and hacks the Pex. I mean, it's not like they're really threatening me. If they get a Scald Burn, I do lose. Yeah, they get the Scald Burn immediately, so now there's no chance. Burn immediately through Flinch is kind of unfortunate, but I, I would have had to get really lucky, I think. Maybe not. If I flinched this to death, I might have been able to do it single-handedly with Draco, plus Flamethrower, maybe. I don't know, but... Um, is it worth switching out? Like, it could be. I guess we'll go for the, the Flinch one more time. Like, I know this guy won, but I don't think he played it optimally. Like, he should have never sacked the Weavile. He should have never let it take a Shadow Ball. Like, the plays like that was what really gave me a chance right here, whereas I think had he played it smart, it would have been an auto win. It looks like I might win this anyway, if he doesn't come back. I think he's coming back. But, uh, we'll see. I hope he doesn't come back, if I'm being honest, because uh, this game's result is already here. But if I can get the points, like, might as well take them, right? You know what's funny? If he just wasn't Scarf Dracovish here, I could probably solo with uh, Terrakion, but... Well, that depends if Hippowdon takes enough. Yeah, he is gonna come back. I do flinch it there. I have to get every flinch right now if I want to win, because I'm taking burn damage every turn, which is a yikes. A crit there would have been great too, but I guess it is what it is. If I don't flinch here, I'll switch out to Terak the next turn. Oh, T-Spike, huh? So he's really adamant about Terakia not wrapping it up, which is understandable, obviously. It was Baneful Bunker the whole time. It was T-Spike's Baneful Bunker, okay. So I need to flinch or crit here, like, that's really it. Yeah, and I can't get anything. Uh, we'll go hard to rack and try to SD, and maybe I can get a kill, and then maybe Hydreigon can flinch the rest to death, depending on what he gives me. Yeah, I'll just go for SD. He should just go hard Dracovish. Like, it's kind of no drawback, I guess. Because, like, even if I do kill the Dracovish coming in, I don't think I, he can lose. So we'll go ahead and Life Orb Earthquake here. He's actually probably going to Baneful Bunker, I think. No, because if I Rock Polished, he could lose if I did that. Maybe his Helmet Hippo? I mean, I don't know if we ever saw the item, but... Let's actually see how much close combat would do to the... Hippowdon, as he actually gave me the Pharaoh. Okay. So... 
I'm gonna go Hydreigon and maybe crit plus. No, he has too many turns with the the Toxifex. That first turn burn was really unfortunate. Let's go ahead and uh, get out of here. I'll be right back. Guys, my mind is blown right now. I don't think I've ever seen Piper run a team without Specs Pelipper, and here we are. He is running uh, dual screens HO without a Pelipper. <laughs> Crazy. But let's go ahead and uh, lead off with Hydra. Against the drill, I think I U turn to Toad, maybe. Yeah, that should be fine. I mean, I could also just flamethrower right out the gate, but I don't think that's smart. Oh, wait, but I need Toad for the, the Cloister, I just realized. Okay, we're gonna make a crazy play here. Yeah, I knew he would rocks up immediately. There's all these hyper offense players do. They just get up rocks turn one and then hope that one of their setup sweepers can do it. <laughs> but I get a close combat here, which I love. Hard Necrozma. Looks like Stone Edge should do the remaining amount. Let's just calc against, like, an offensive set. Necrozma, Stone Edge does 62 to 73. Close combat did 36 though, so that means he does have a bit of bulk on there. I think we'll go for it. If he doubles in the drill. I don't know what he was really hoping for there, but I'll go for a close combat again, I guess. Like, Oh, he's Scarf. He's Scarf Rocks. Oh, Timid, my Hydreigon being Timid Scarf kind of messed me up then. Wait, but if he's Scarf Rocks, that means he can't prevent my rocks, right? No, but we've acknowledged that if Seismito takes damage, then I lose to Cloyster. Is that true, though? I have a Mimikyu. No, but Mimikyu gets hit through the disguise because of multi-hit, yeah. Okay, we'll go to this, then. We know he's locked in, so I might as well U-turn. Necrozma, that's not scary. I have checks to this. And uh, by checks, I mean I have a Hydreigon that is going to click Dark Pulse here. Hard Grimmsnarl is a good play. We'll make the Corviknight play. Fuck. It's, this is a weird HO build. <laughs> is it dual screens or not? It's life orb, but it's it could still be screens. Okay, we'll just make the Mimikyu play and player off. I mean, he's going to have Sucker Punch, right? He actually misses a Thunder Wave, yikes. And goes back to Drill. You know what? Whatever, dude. I'm just going to get up rocks and then try to beat your Cloyster using... Uh, Mimic you and... No, I'm gonna lose to Cloyster now, but I, I don't think it sets up on anything, right? That's the main thing here. It can't set up. I mean, here I go to Hydreigon and Draco. Like, I have to. D-Dan says, if I miss, I lose. If I don't miss, I would probably win, I want to say. Goes for it again. He didn't even have a way to kill me, so he just banged off a flinch there. I think I should probably keep this, and, uh, I'm sorry, Chrysola, you are going down to allow this Pokemon to come in. So he's gonna bring back the Scarf Drill. Scarf Moldbreaker Drill is so annoying. Did I crit him? <laughs> I did crit him. <laughs> okay, there we go. I think I might have robbed him here. <laughs> Uh, do I keep it, or do I go Toad? I think I just Shadow Sneak. I think I still need to hack the Toxtricity, right? Which I did. <laughs> I'm getting so lucky during this video. I feel kind of bad, like, this guy's a good player, too. But uh, yeah, crit plus flinch right there just won me this. His team composition caught me so off guard though. Like I didn't expect Scarf Moldbreaker and then Life Orb Grimmsnarl. That like messed me up so badly. Because my plan was to go Corviknight, get U-turn momentum as he starts to set up screens. or And then he would have been forced to taunt, right? I could get in Mimikyu for free, but then he just like busted out the, the tech. Anyway, uh, that's going to be my win. Completely undeserved, but I'll be right back. So I have another game right now. This has been an interesting live because in game one... I lucked, but I think I could have won that one without luck. In game two, I didn't lose because of luck, but my opponent's luck made it so that I couldn't win with luck. And then in game three, I completely lucked my opponent, and that's why I won. But um, this guy's a Copper Raja, which I actually think he's going to lead with. He probably has Power Whip, too. Okay, Hydreigon is good to revenge a lot. 
I think Cursola, like Hyper Offense and Cursola matchup is just not there. What is that thing speed tier? 30. Okay, please don't be faster than me, dude. That would be so random and it would make me so sad. Dude, if you have speed on this, I'm gonna cry. I guess I should have expected it. Like, it, it is a lead set after all. Well, I can win, but I was really hoping to just get the, the shadow balls off early. <laughs> yeah, I thought he would be like max HP, max attack. I don't know why, but yeah, he's able to, he's able to outspeed me there. <laughs> That's actually so sad. Oh, he has a Zara too. I'm going to lose. <laughs> I mean, it's not like that thing was doing anything against anything else, right? Like, I don't think I was going to do anything with Cursola aside from that lead situation. So I get momentum here. So he values that thing Sash, which is important to keep in mind. If I want to win, it's going to be a Mimikyu. So let's go to this here and get up rocks. Break that Copperage Sash. Opt to teleport. That is fine. Uh, if I want to beat Gyarados, I have to Draco it. Okay, so this is like the most obvious grass knot I've ever seen, but I think I sack this anyway. Like, I could go hard Hydreigon, but that just seems really pointless, and he's not even Life Orb, so I lived it. I don't think the, the crit probably mattered, actually. He's not even Life Orb, yeah, but I don't think Hydreigon was a good play. Is this trying to spin? It is trying to spin. Okay, well... If you want to spin, I will bring in Corviknight. As he goes for the Earthquake, and I can go right for Body Press here. I think he might try to SD, which is why I'm doing this. No, he goes hard into the Dragapult, which I think is Scarf. Pretty sure this is Scarf Drag. And it misses a Scarf Fire Blast. The luck is not stopping today. I'll go to this guy and U-turn on the Clef, I think. So we have we got drill in range of Shadow Sneak, which is really good for me. Wait, am I faster? I am. Okay, good. <laughs> so like now if he goes back to drill to try to spin, I get the kill on it. And my Corviknight's at full. What do you pass that to? Well, you're not passing it to drill, I can tell you that. So could you just knock off the leftovers? I guess he is passing it to drill, never mind. Wait, but it's the same thing, right? I can just earth power. I would never go Mimikyu. Mimikyu is a bad play. I just want this in range of Shadow Sneak. I don't care about his spin. Let's go ahead and bring out Corviknight again. Doubles in Gera, that's fine. I can U-turn on it. If it's sub, that's scarier. But I think I can beat any set. So if I miss Draco, I do lose. Oh, it's a leftover. Should I Dark Pulse? I don't think he can kill me. I think Dark Pulse might net me with more damage in the long run here. He's able to DD again, but he shouldn't be able to Oko me with anything, I want to say. Because he's leftovers, he's not bounce. Yeah, and that's, that's enough damage, I want to say, for Mimikyu. Although, looking at that, I might actually have to play rough. Unless I want to be safe and Shadow Sneak twice. Do I keep this? I'm thinking about second Toad. Um, yeah, we'll keep this around. Maybe I randomly get up rocks here. You never know. Oh, dude, if he's sub, I just lost. I just threw. I just realized if he's sub, I just lost. He misses a power up, so I even get up the rocks. There you go. And um, we're in a situation where if I do get flint, the game is over. Two shadow sneaks is not going to do enough. Okay, but we don't get flinched. <laughs> Which would have been a yikes, but... So we got a rocks up, which is really helpful, I'm not gonna lie. Those were like the luckiest rocks ever. This live has just been the luckiest thing ever. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's... We're in a spot where I can go Corviknight and try to body press. Good play. 
I have to give you credit there. But... He's leftovers, by the way. I don't think I saw those until now. Gets up his rocks. And pivots in clef, okay. So I guess the question is, do I defog or not? I don't think I need Hydreigon. Oh, that actually worked out. Well, not really, because he has a Dragapult to come in. And uh, I'm pretty sure we, we we should know this is Scarf at this point. Wait, he goes to Drill. Why? To go right back to Clef, right? Yeah, okay, I was going to say, like, I'm not going to predict that, but... He should go right back to Clef. He would wish here, so I think we go to Terrakion. Actually, let's just Dark Pulse. As he teleports again, I'm getting him a lot right now. And this time, I think I might go for the double. Oh, but he goes back, he goes to Kaparaja this time. We're going to take damage here if he wants to give it to me. If he goes to Cloth, I'm going to go hard to rack, hoping he wishes, but he goes for the damage. I got a crit there. Okay, we're going to go Terrakion. Because it literally denies anything from getting a recovery as long as I hit a Stone Edge. Uh, is Earthquake actually better? Earthquake is better, yeah. Could have SD'd, didn't think it was worth it. I can Stone Edge here and it will kill. I need to hit, but if I hit, I think I win. Single-handedly with Corviknight. I don't think switching out gives him anything. I just gotta hit this Stone Edge into Clef and I should be able to wrap it up. There's no way Spidef Clef eats Life Orb Stone Edge from Terrakion. I know this. I could even put it in the Calc. I guess we will, just in case it changes my play, but... I don't think it does, and I play a Stone Edge, like, no matter what. Oh, there's actually rolls where it does live, huh? Opts to go Drill, which we do know is a Leftovers. I will Earthquake here. Pick it off. He's gonna go Dragapult after. Okay, good. Yep, I just sack off Hydreigon. If he clicks Draco here, I automatically win with Mimikyu as long as I hit a play rough. He goes for Fire Blast. Okay, that's good because I can go Terraki on here and we should, we sh he should be locked into that. So let's go ahead and Earthquake as he sacks Copper Aja. And then I think Mimikyu beats the, the last two. Hard Clef was not the play, dude. Yeah, that's that was a mistake. I don't know why you would do that. Yeah, he, he threw by going Hard Clef. He could have played off a miss or something from player off, but he didn't. So now all I have to do is go Corviknight. On the Shadow Ball. I could Roost Spam it, I guess, until I get Spidef dropped. If he Spidef drops me, I'll U-turn. Yeah, now I U-turn here. Yep, he did Spidef drop me on that turn, which is good because I did make the switch. Then I just gotta go to Mimic you. Shadow Sneak here. Pick it off, and then Copper Aja won't win. I'll be right back. So I have another game right here. We beat that guy while essentially playing 5-6, so that's kind of funny, but my opponent has Pelipper Dracovish, which that definitely means it's probably Specs Pelipper with Hurricane U-Turn, Scald or Surf sort of thing. Tracheon is good, and Hydreigon is good. Actually, Hydreigon Dark Pulse is 100% my endgame here, but I need to be careful about Zara. <laughs> Zara can win. We'll lead Hydreigon as he leads Pelipper. I want to say I just outright KO this set with Draco. Like, offensive Pelipper is really frail. Yeah, Draco does straight up KO offensive Pelipper. Oh, I just took a Hurricane to the face. Why is he that set? He's not Specs. He has, like, max HP or something. So, 
Now I can't let it take any damage, but I put it in range of Scarf Sludge Wave. That was a horrible turn one. Okay, we'll go Toad here on the Tailwind. Okay, I can try to get up rocks. You might Hurricane for damage, yeah, but as long as I get up rocks, I'm happy. And then we'll go Corviknight. I want to keep the Water Immunity, of course, for the Scarf Dracovish. Although, looking at Tailwind, it might be Choice Band. And then we'll U-turn here. So not my best sequence around this, if I'm being honest. I could have done that a lot better. Goes to Pharaoh. Anyway, I think this is the one chance that you're going to get to do something. So let's go over to Shadow Ball. You want to dodge lead cheats like you did in, I think, the first game, right? I think the first game was the one that I dodged a lot of lead cheats in. I don't know what he thought would happen there, but... Out comes the fish... If I let Toad go down, I just start a blues to this, so I think I should make a different play first. Nah. Goes for Crunch. I can get up rocks. Okay, that's good. And assuming he's locked into that, I can make a pivot out here into Terrakion. I should have probably calc the damage before making such a reckless maneuver, but yeah, now I just got a free close combat. Just make a Scarf Mew. I could Stone Edge into that. Sex of the Pelipper. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep Toad alive for the rest of the game just to make sure I don't get swept by Fisher Strand. I think that's the smartest way to go about this. Maybe. He goes to the fish. I definitely keep this. It's good against Pharaoh. I think regarding expendable mons, you all know who I'm thinking of, but we're not doing that. <laughs> Goes for Earthquake. <laughs> okay, so we catch that. He's really desperate to take the Toad and then try to go for an endgame with this, but I know I need to keep Toad alive just for Fisher's Strand. Hello! I have a nice Life Orb Close Combat. Does your Mew want it? I don't think anybody wants it. I think if he throws this out, I just win with Mimikyu, right? I don't know why he went hard to Gengar. Like, I thought it was going to be Sash when he hard pivoted in, but... Honestly, I don't even think I die. That's the thing. So here, I think, once again, Corviknight is just... Well, actually, this is probably the expendable mod now. Goes right for play rough. So what do I want to do? Do I want to go Hydreigon and Dark Pulse? Yeah, I think that's smart. I don't know. It could be throwing. I guess we'll U-turn. Just to get Chip for Dark Pulse later. And then I'll bring this out on the play rough. And then go for U-turn here. I think I'd live non-life or plasma fists, so yeah, I'll be able to get damage for Dark Pulse, and then this should be able to wrap it up, unless he's like a Salt Vest. But yeah, the key was keeping Mimikyu, because it beats Mew and it makes Dracovish not a threat. So I killed that. He has to go Mew and like, Scarf hacks everything. Actually, Cursola, funnily enough, is what's stopping that. He actually finally fishes surrendered, but... Like, I wasn't going to go Toad anyway. Yeah, I'll be right back. So I have another game right here. It might be the last one unless I get beat down or beat him down very quickly. I definitely want to lead off with... Well, let's think. Cursola can do work if it comes down on Rotom or Pharaoh, but that's about it. He would lead Hippo here, I think, because... Well, if he's expecting my rocker, he would probably lead Pharaoh, but then if I lead Cursola, he's in a bad spot. Dragapult kind of covers everything for him. I think we'll go Cursola. If he leads Dragapult, I should be able to live its hit. Like, I'll calc spec Shadow Ball here. This thing has a really good spit F. It might be physical. I do live spec Shadow Ball, so we're gonna throw off a Shadow Ball here. Yeah, he goes for U-turn, so this that sequence of plays helps me out a lot. This is gonna take 80. 76, okay. Yeah, really odd maneuver. I wanna calc actually what that damage meant. So it is just like max special attack, it seems. We'll make the play into Toad as he doubles into Clef. I'm not really scared of this. I think rocks into knockoff could actually be worth it because I have body press Pharah for the drill anyway, and I can beat Rotom using Hydreigon and Terrakion pressure. So I think rocks here is going to be what I should do. And I'm going to go hard Cursola here. Yep, as he goes for the uh, spike. I hope I don't die to knock off, but I feel like I definitely do. Ooh, I didn't. That's actually funny that I was able to hang on there. So I can hit him again here. It looks like I actually kill. 
Unfortunately, he pivots in clef, which isn't going to give me many options right now. He's kind of putting himself in a tough spot against Mimikyu, but he still has a full help hippo, so I need to use Track to pressure it. Goes ahead and wishes. He lets me keep it low, which actually probably doesn't really matter a ton. We'll go to this on the Discharge and just throw off a knockoff. We got rid of Boots right there, which is actually going to help out a lot. He would definitely go Clef here. I think the Cursola sack kind of covers everything, yeah. Because if he goes Clef, then I get momentum on it anyway. We're going to make the Terrakion play and just go right for SD and try to get rid of that Hippo. Oh, dude, that was a mistake. I'm going to Earthquake you. <laughs> Yeah, and I do way too much to Hippo. I think I just Earthquake again. Unless that's a nasty roll. Like, what if I get a max into him, man? Let's double check. Oh, that actually is a roll, huh? I think it was hard Dragapult. Like, I basically win if I get rid of this, because Mimikyu is so good. But I don't want hard Dragapult coming in, so let's just go ahead and make the play that I want to, which is Earthquake. Dude, if he lives, I'm going to be so sad. Sex off Pharaoh is a mid-ground, okay. Good play. We'll make the Corviknight play here. On the Iron Head, not scary. Goes right for that. And dies, now it should be over. Is this a DD as well? No, it's just Shadow Ball, okay. Probably just go mimic you here and wrap it up. Let's I wanna say, let's just do that. Yeah, that's a shadow sneak and then Oh wait, I'm adamant though. I forgot about Rotom. <laughs> wait, but I have um This will die. I forgot about the the heavy duty boots being knocked off. <laughs> so yeah, this will die too. And then I beat the, the Clefable every time. With a nice shadow claw, and that will be that, so I think we went 5-1, and one, but I definitely locked a couple of games right there, so uh, yeah, definitely not the most legitimate 5-1 and one live, but it was a lot of fun. I actually really enjoyed this one. I did hope you all enjoyed it as well, and I'll see you guys next time. Later.